Today we are going to be looking at WWE 2K24. Does this game live up to the hype of the last couple games? 2K23? 2K22? I don't know. Is it a complete disaster like an unmentioned game? <laughs> 2K20, or is it perfectly average with nothing special to it at all? Uh, stay tuned and find out as we crack open WWE 2K24 to see what it has in store. Hey everyone, welcome to my brand new channel. Uh, I appreciate you guys being here. I just wanted to say real quick thank you if you are watching this. If you could like the video, subscribe to the channel. That would be much appreciated. Back to the video. Okay, I figured let's start with My Rise. I feel like it is a mode that most of us play with WWE games. Uh, I know My GM, all that stuff. Sometimes it's not for everybody. So the video isn't two hours long or anything. Let's just try to focus on like the main storyline of this. First off, I must really say I enjoy the different approach to career mode this year. It's not your typical work your way from a scrub to WrestleMania win the big one and then that's it although you do start as a scrub in this it is a very very different approach to it and something different happens almost instantly it's revealed that roman reigns has basically got bored of dominating everybody and he gives up his championship to head to hollywood uh just like his cousin the rock and john cena as well and now a new champion will be crowned at SummerSlam in a one night tournament your wrestler is given the opportunity as a bottom card kind of guy undercard barely wins any matches barely on tv he's given the opportunity to be the last entrant in the tournament if he can win on the kickoff show SummerSlam. i should probably mention that i am a massive wrestling fan so i'm excited to start this channel with this video it just kind of worked out timing wise anyways you kick off or you win the kickoff match and you begin your journey through the tournament as a quote-unquote dark horse which also becomes your corny nickname in this game like they like to do so they can like verbally call you something in the story. Um, but after scrapping your way through three opponents, you finally land against the obvious favorite Cody Rhodes in the finals. So then I figured you'd put up a great fight against Cody and lose in a cutscene or some BS like that. But then the cutscene plays and BAM! Roman actually screws over Cody instead of you getting screwed over and you shockingly become the undisputed WWE Champion just like that. Then following that on Raw, they pull something very, very interesting. Uh, you have a rematch with Cody on to kick off the show. In the middle of the match, SmackDown's GM, The Miz, of all people? At this point, I was kind of feeling good about my rise already because The Miz is GM of SmackDown for some reason and Regal's the GM of Raw. But Miz announces that SmackDown's first draft pick is going to be used right now in this moment to select your wrestler. And that makes this match illegal, according to him, because you belong to SmackDown and you're having a match on Raw, I guess. So they kind of play that card and the match is just canceled all of a sudden and you once again escape Cody Rhodes. So then you move over to SmackDown and you do your standard title defense stuff for a little bit, but then you eventually get attacked in your promo by Kane of all people. And at this point I was like, this is already going off the rails and I'm having fun. Uh, this turns into an unexpected surprise for you that leads you into needing help from another wrestler to take on the likes of Kane. And uh, let's just say I chose Dirty Dom for this. And oh my god, I don't regret it at all. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> and I'll probably show you what I mean on the screen. I had a blast with this part of the game. Damn, son. Why are you trying to break my jaw? Because you jumped me in a parking lot. This is how we do it in maximum security. One of my boys, he can get me a discount on a taser. Kane's gonna get got when he least expects it. Prison rules! So you eventually defeat Kane in a Kassik match, and in my scenario, from the help of Dirty Dom which I loved, but then Roman Reigns appears on the screen after you beat Kane to send you a chilling threat from Hollywood after the Roman thing. This is honestly probably the only portion of this mode I didn't enjoy after the Roman thing. They kind of skip ahead randomly, and I mean randomly right to a match against Drew McIntyre at next year's SummerSlam, just like that. The, the Drew McIntyre random match and being forced to do random side quest matches to advance at this like upcoming part of the story are really my only main negatives like I have other negatives but these two really were like big ones for me that's kind of where I got uninterested in continuing this 
It kind of just felt very, like, off to me. I don't know. But luckily for me, after this part of the game, it picks right back up. You suddenly get thrown into a, uh, I, I guess a filler feud, you could call it, with Xavier Woods. But I enjoyed this a lot for being a filler feud. You actually get the option to go heal and join in the Miz by joining the Miz. And a heal option is always a joy to see for me because it gets kind of repetitive and boring, in my opinion, to like be the face all the time, be the good guy in wrestling. Like wrestling's meant to be good guys and bad guys, and it's nice to play a different kind of thing with it. So this was a nice little switch up for me. So you bet your ass I went heal without hesitation. If you can't tell from my tone. Miz then wants you to be a multi-talented superstar, so he pairs you up with my personal WWE crush at the moment, Gigi Dolan. So I thought that was kind of funny of all people that he paired you up with. It was the uh, the girl I'm low-key in love with in WWE. But uh, you, yeah, you get paired with Gigi Dolan and you kind of rip off up, up, down, down. And at this point during this, you get to face Xavier Woods in WWE 2K24 and it looks like you're playing on the actual YouTube channel which I thought was a very neat touch and thought it was very cool but uh as a YouTube guy myself and a fan of Up Up Down Down this portion of the game really clicked with me I know it's not everybody's cup of tea but I thought it was great after beating Xavier and shutting down Up Up Down Down Miz wants you to be like a global icon kind of superstar he just doesn't think that the ch YouTube things quiet enough, so he sets up a good old-fashioned WWE wedding with Gigi Dolan. And let's just say that I was very hyped at this point for reasons that I already mentioned. But I think you could kind of grasp what I'm getting at here as to why. But as with most things at WWE, this did not go to plan. The wedding is crashed by Seth Rollins and Becky, the actual real-life couple of WWE. Uh, this got me very invested to tear these two apart because they ripped away my dream of marrying Gigi Dolan and I will never ever forgive Seth Rollins for that. But anyways, I assumed it would lead to a tag match though between the four of us, like a mixed tag kind of deal. But once again, this mode left me with a pleasant surprise. You actually get to play as Gigi night one at WrestleMania to face Becky for Becky's title. And night two, you play as yourself defending your title against Seth Rollins, so I thought that was kind of neat. It kind of switched it up. I will say, though, at this point after Mania, you do beat them both, and Gigi gets her title ripped away immediately by The Miz because she gets sent to a different brand, and I thought that was kind of a stupid way out of this. I kind of hate the, uh, like, short storyline things that these new career modes do. Like, there's no, like, longevity to them, I feel like. They're, like, real quick feuds, and then they're done with. Like, it would have been cool to, like, have Gigi by your side for longer than that. And that's not just biased because I love that girl. It's just what I really, really, truly feel. But, yeah, after you get, sh or she gets stripped of the title, yours carries on. And I realized a couple other things at this point. The calendar for this career mode is really all over the place. When you get put into the Elimination Chamber to defend your title right after Mania, I was like, w what's going on here? And secondly, uh is how much I fucking hate the button mashing mechanic for submissions, especially during the chamber match for this. I know this is the way the gameplay is now, but man, do I really miss that like rotating wheel thing from 2K19. Warning, this is not going to be the only time I reference 2K19. I love that game to death. I, yeah, I miss the wheel thing for the submission thing. I feel like it was actually skill-based instead of kind of being predetermined once you get later in the match. Sorry for the outrage, I was just very irritated when I was trying to enjoy my evening recording and I had to play this damn chamber match four times because they have to start you at number one or number two so you have to go all the way through the chamber and I just kept tapping out to random headlocks or whatever. But uh, matches like this are where I really just, like I just despise the four subjectives and I just wish if I lost the chamber then the career mode would like branch off to alternative paths like OG games that I won't mention. <coughs> Anyway, fast forward a little, and you finally rekindle your rivalry with Cody Rhodes. Uh, between Cody and Roman, this is what I was waiting for the entire time. I wanted to see where this went. Cody, now the World Heavyweight Champion, which I was not expecting. Uh, even the game notes that uh, Cody isn't worthy of beating Roman, so they gave him the World Heavyweight title in the game, even though he's on the cover of the game. This story with Cody takes the like John Cena versus Shawn Michaels route from WrestleMania 23. If you recall that, if you were watching wrestling back then, you uh, team up together and you eventually become like tag team champions together. 
Then during a tag title defense at some point, Cody walks out on you leading up to your unification title match at the Royal Rumble against Cody Rhodes. Yes, I said the Rumble after the Elimination Chamber, but it's not after the Elimination Chamber because you eventually find out that you fast forwarded like nine months to the actual Royal Rumble because you're already on the road to WrestleMania again. This is where I kind of like disconnect from these career modes a little bit because you end up having like a really long title reign and it kind of feels like it a little bit but i'm talking like a year long not like three years long so as a huge wwe fan i am aware that cody rhodes is wwe's poster child so i was very intrigued to see how the game was going to book this match with him and if i'm being honest with you it was very underwhelming it's just a typical win the match and that's it no cutscenes. you just kind of beat the face of raw and in real life one of the faces of wwe Clean as a whistle, and that that's it. There's really nothing else to it. And just when I'm feeling a tad underwhelmed, and the game was about to lose me again, we moved to Monday Night Raw, and let's just say the shit goes down. You get sent out on Raw to do a promo as double champion now, because that was a unification match, even though you're already the undisputed champion. I wish they would just call it the WWE Championship again. But you find out that Montez Ford was the surprising Royal Rumble winner, and now your opponent at WrestleMania. And no offense to Montez, but I was very, very underwhelmed still. The underwhelming feeling was creeping. And then, bang! Roman Reigns appears on the screen door in Montez's entrance and saves the day for me. Your character is threatening to tie Roman's record for the longest title reign of the modern era if you, uh, if you make it through WrestleMania as champion. So the Tribal Chief is not having that. So they once again surprised me with this. Obviously, you're going to go face Roman at WrestleMania, right? To stop the record from happening, he's going to finally show up after three years of being away and stop you. But no, that's that's not what happens. He reveals that he has hired somebody that will guarantee that you'll be stopped. And of all people who he hires... What? The Beast is back! Rock comes out to the stage and Kofi Kingston's Montez Ford's ass. And if you know what I'm talking about, you know. Brock locks in the Kimura on Montez and as you attempt to rush to his rescue, you get jumped by a completely reunited bloodline and everything just goes off the rails just like that. And I was like, I love this chaos of this and I was into it. And after that chaos, he receives some help from Sami Zayn in the future weeks. And another partner of your choice. Me, I consider myself one of the biggest Randy Orton fans on this earth. So I always pick Randy whenever the opportunity presents itself. So I chose Randy Orton here, no surprise. Uh, you defeat the Bloodline with your new partner of your choice and Sami Zayn. And you get attacked by Lesnar, which leads into your night one WrestleMania defense, which already caught my attention because it's night one and it's for the main championship. But we'll get to that. So you get to Mania, you have another clean win match with Brock, which also was kind of underwhelming because it's Brock Lesnar, the guy that's pretty unstoppable as far as title matches and big matches go. And they kind of just did the usual thing, but I see kind of why they did it because they wanted you to get like a clean, nice victory at Mania to finish the story, Cody, sorry. But then Roman appears and spoils your celebration and then says he doesn't need anyone to help finish you off. So the challenge is laid out for night two with the title record on the line. Roman Reigns, the tribal chief, versus your character. And I must say, going into this final boss-like class with Roman, for one, was very fitting for Roman Reigns because he just has that final boss aura. So I'm glad in a career mode they kind of set that up finally. But uh, I love the walkout scene here. As you're going to the curtain, you get to see your previous rivals as you make your way to the entrance. And sorry not to pick on Cody again, because as a Randy Orton fan, I actually do like Cody. But I just thought this stuff was hilarious in here. Cody looks really, really salty that 2K let you finish his story. Uh, the match itself was solid and has a cutscene, which I very, very much enjoyed. Uh, the Miz comes out and tries to pull a screw job on you. He pulls some like... 2011 money in the bank john cena cm punk match kind of thing where he tries to ring the bell while to make you tap out you stop that from happening and once again you win 
and that's it. It's just kind of over. The celebration stuff was cool at the end. I just felt like it needed more than that. I don't know. It still was good, though. It wasn't. It just wasn't crazy over-the-top entertainment for me. But I did enjoy it still. But uh, what, what's my summary of this mode overall now that we blasted through that? Uh, this mode gains a lot of points for me for just simply being fun and also trying something different. Instead of grinding to become champion, you become the surprise champion on the first pay-per-view that you literally play in this mode. You're challenged with defending your championship instead of chasing. So what are the negatives? Well, I, I really don't enjoy the linear stories in WWE games, so that's always a small negative for me. Overall, I'm not going to hate the mode because of that. It would just gain probably a point for me automatically if you let it just branch out and do its thing from results. I just hate the idea of winning every single match and feeling unstoppable because that's, that's just the vibe it gives me. I just feel like you can never actually lose because you can't. And if you lose, you have to redo the same match you just played, which was where I got frustrated in the chamber playing that for two hours of my life. And I just, I don't know, it's a small complaint. But another small complaint is I just wish there was a little bit more cutscenes sprinkled in. I feel like this year they kind of just went a lot with the standard win the match. It's just, there's entertainment side of WWE that's so important to me. And it makes playing through this less of a grind and more entertaining and fun. So I just wish they sprinkled that in a little bit more. But yeah, that's my thoughts on my rise. So let's move to the next section. Oh, showcase. Oh, where do I begin? Going from a pretty good mode in my rise to a controversial one. I feel like a lot of people are split on showcase mode. So let, let's dig into showcase mode. The rest of these sections will be quicker than my rise. I promise my rise was just a long experience. I wanted to go over it with you. Showcase on this channel, you're going to get my brutally honest opinion on things, whether it's negative, positive, something you agree with or heavily disagree with, I'm going to tell you how I truly feel, because that's the kind of person that I am. So bear with me with this one. If, you, <laughs> if you're somebody that loves Showcase to death, you might even want to skip this. So with that being said, I finally get to say this out loud. I am so over Showcase mode being around in WWE games, especially since they changed the gameplay in 2K22 to this newer style stuff. The previous two years, they need you to do these specific ass moves, grapples, grabs, whatever you want to call it, and good luck figuring out how to do those specific things that you need to do to move forward in the game. It just becomes a grindy chore of a mode that I cannot stand. But I will say at least this year they explain how to do the move on the screen when you have your objective. But that only exists because even they know how petty and confusing the newer controls have been in this mode the last couple years. So they have to spell it out for you because it's just ridiculous. And personally, me as a hardcore wrestling fan, I'm just so bored of playing through matches I've seen a hundred times just to unlock the WrestleMania arenas that I want to play with for matches on the main menu. You have to play through this in order to unlock those Mania arenas. And if you want to see the matches that are in the showcase mode every year, please do yourself a favor. Go watch them instead of experiencing them like this. Because this is just not a good way to experience the epicness of these matches. Doing boring objectives and just dragging through these instead of just enjoying the spectacle of these WrestleMania matches. If showcase mode must exist, I'd rather it be more like a Road to WrestleMania kind of thing. But a little different than that. Like, focus on one wrestler and create their own story for them instead of playing matches that already happened. It doesn't have to be WrestleMania based, just play basically like a, I don't know, a one year career mode for a superstar that's on the cover or something. Like come up with something creative. But no, they have to take the lazy easy route that modern day gaming people love to do and it just, I don't know, it's just not a good mode and I just refuse to support it anymore. And on top of everything I just said, they actually got me a bit excited this year for the 40 years of Mania, I must admit. When the trailer dropped for that, I remember being at work, and I saw that, and I was like, oh my god. Every single WrestleMania arena is going to be on these next-gen graphics looking fine as hell. And it got me very excited, at least for that. Like, I wasn't excited to actually play the showcase mode, but I would have went through it to unlock every single arena for WrestleMania ever. But... No, you can't have nice things. They can't even do that right. 
All I wanted was to see every Mania Arena in the game. That would have been badass in my opinion, but nope. 2K14 can do it, but 2K24 on this new modern day technology? Nah, that's, that's too much to ask of them. They can't do that. They gotta sprinkle in a few here and there. They can't give you every single one of them. That would be too fun and that'd be too cool. Let's just let the modding community do it instead. So honestly, there is a positive in this. The surprise Mania All-Star Royal Rumble thing at the end, whatever you want to call that, was actually pretty cool. It was cool to f uh, like fight in the Rumble to see who the best WrestleMania like wrestler of all time was. That was kind of the idea behind it. You get to choose somebody to represent in it and try to win it. I failed miserably at winning it, and I was very depressed because I wanted Randy to just take it over and win that shit. But it did not happen. It was still cool, though, to see all those like big names in there and stuff. Instead of your typical Royal Rumble where like half of the entrants are kind of jobbers or, you know, they have no, no chance of winning it. So it was just different. I thought it was cool. Uh, but overall, showcase mode, forgettable once again for me, boring chore. Don't, don't support this mode. I mean, you can have your own opinion and support it if you want, but if you want my opinion, it needs to go. You can get so much better out of this game than that. So yeah, let's move on to the next thing. Alright, we go from good mode, to controversial mode, to my most important mode that makes this game for me the last couple years. Let's move on to GM mode. And for me, personally, outside of create a story, this is my favorite mode for wrestling games. So this is really, really impactful for how I feel about the game every year. And uh, I'm I, it's hard to pick a starting point for GM mode because there's so much to talk about. But I decided let's just start from the beginning. And going into this mode, I was very critical of the last couple GM modes, if you can't tell so far. But uh, my main three issues the last three years that I'm going to go over right now and see if they address them or not. Uh, number one, and probably the most important one for me, is there's no money in the bank or Royal Rumble. And I feel like that's just a huge letdown not to have that implemented in some way. Uh, that's not my job to figure out how to do that. That's why 2K gets paid the big bucks. Uh... But it would be nice to have that as the old games did. And it's just important to have in the in the uh, calendar of WWE. And the mode, in my opinion, has never been truly challenging. It's my second thing with this. Uh, it's just, I feel like I, throughout the last couple years, I think other than my very first playthrough on 2K22 when I had literally no idea what I was doing. Uh, after that one, I just never, ever, ever struggled. And I like mean that. I wish I didn't mean that. But I just, I never struggled with this. Like, you match the classes, you get better ratings with that, and you kind of just sit on that and you do your thing, and there's no really challenge from the computer players. I don't know. I, I'm basing this off of single player, so. And the third thing is I just feel like this mode becomes very repetitive. Kind of bleeds into the last thing I just said. It's very just repetitive, very little replayability. Like I said, you just match the classes up. And that's kind of just it, and you just do the same thing over and over again. There just needs to be a little bit more variety sprinkled in here and there. So, like I said, as we move along in the last couple minutes of this my GM thing, I'll address if they address these opinions or not. Um, I always love the new additions of the GM characters and the brands that you get to choose from. It adds a bit of variety to it, and it depends on how you play with who you pick. So, I always think that's cool. And I was very happy to see that they added my favorite brand of all time, ECW. I do not have a face cam at the moment on this channel, but I would have my ECW belt over my shoulder probably this entire video because I love ECW. I am a huge WWE fan and I'm an even bigger ECW guy, so I was already pumped going into this. I feel like going into GM mode this year, there was very little talk about the features and stuff, so I was kind of weary about like new things and interesting stuff to check out. I, th I just assumed that they weren't changing a thing this year, but man, was I ever wrong. I begin the mode, and even before I draft, I see extreme difficulty, which already got me excited. And then I saw that you can unlock match types instead of having everything unlocked instantly. And I was a little bit unsure about what exactly that meant, but I am pleased to say that that was actually pretty cool. And also, whenever you go to draft, there are higher contract prices for wrestlers. I saw a couple people on there, I think it was Rey Mysterio specifically, 
he was like seven hundred thousand dollars or something and at the time i had no clue why he was priced so high and i would have never in a million years drafted him but we will get to that in a few moments as to why he was so highly priced but anyways i just i like to see that because i feel like money management has not been that great the last couple years you kind of become rich after like a season or two and you never really have to worry about it again once you unlock like the big arenas so i was happy to see higher contracts that definitely made me happy so then i select my ecw roster jump into the main gm mode screen to find that there's even more new stuff and i was like why is nobody talking about this i just feel like there was no talk about gm mode this year and there was so much juicy stuff to jump into they now have scouting for free agency so instead of just going in and picking whoever you want that's available for the week you actually get scouting points every week and of course there's power cards for them as well but you get to like decide what's important to you for that week like do you need a heel do you need a face do you need a woman do you need a man like it, it all depends and it all costs like scouting points for the week so you can't just go crazy in free agency and buy 10 random superstars that you want I just thought it was interesting and very, very good addition for that. I'll give them credit for that. Uh, ring experience is what I was talking about with the Rey Mysterio contract. Um, so you now have superstars with more or less experience than the other. And I also think that is a very good addition because that does matter a lot in real life. Like Randy Orton, not to be biased, but like the dude is fantastic in the ring with ring experience. And it matters a lot. And that is why he's one of the top guys. And in this, so ring experience, you basically unlock unique perks. The higher that you are, the more perks you unlock. And it makes every superstar very, very different from each other. I'm, I'm thinking next year, if I had to pick a feature that they would add, they're probably going to add more variety to it. Because I did see a decent bit of repeat stuff, but I, it doesn't matter to me. I appreciate that even being a thing. It's really cool. So yeah, Rey Mysterio... It was very, very high ring experience, so that is why he was so expensive. But I always do based on my first experience with it, so I could have, like, quit, jumped back in, redrafted knowing this, but I like to experience it on the fly and judge it for what it is with my first go with it. And going into those unique perks, you also get class-changing promos where you could change your class because I think it makes this game mode very repetitive and boring the last couple years. The fact that fighters can only face bruisers, gi giants can only go with cruisers, you know the deal. So now they give, whenever you unlock that perk with ring experience, you can actually switch to an alternate class. So you could kind of mash up different superstars that you couldn't before. And I absolutely love that. Oh, and also, uh, trading is back. It's a little different than SVR days. You now can only do it after the pay-per-views or whatever. And uh, I, I also welcome that back. It's something that needs to happen. I feel like it's going to be a lot better for player versus player than CPU versus player. So honestly, so far, so good. I think my only negative in the early stages were contract lengths for like your drafted superstars. I missed the SmackDown vs. Raw days where you had to like choose how long to sign them for and they cost different prices based on that. I really think that's something that should be implemented. I kind of get it here. I feel like it works better this year to have them all year because you have that scouting free agency stuff on top of the people that you have all year. I just think it would just add something to, I don't know, it just it's strategy to me. So how is this mode as you play through it? Well, I played through the first year and... Uh, Against the computers, I still feel like there's something missing when you play solo. I just feel like you need more interaction with the computers. I just, most of the year, I feel like they don't really exist outside of the trading tab that they added. I just wish they would bring back, like, stealing wrestlers that are, like, pissed at the other brand. And I know they technically have that, but it's always, like, superstars that are, like, never, ever used by the other brand and they end up with like 40 popularity and you have no interest in actually having them i'm talking about like popular superstars that you literally screw them over because you forgot to do a promise or something and they just jump ship instantly no like second chances none of that like they get mad like they used to in the svr days and they just jump ship because that just changes a lot of things and it gives you other brand interaction when they just steal one of your superstars because you messed up also, I feel like shared match cards for the major pay-per-views that need to exist would be cool, like the SVR days as well, like where you have a War Games match, let's just say at Survivor Series, and it affects, like, you put, like, your team against the other brand's team, 
and it affects like the Royal Rumble entrance and stuff like that. I know not to copy the SVR days, but it really worked well and it made it really fun and interesting. Like I said, War Games is in it and in the game, and like I just feel like that's perfect. You literally put your four guys that you choose and you just face off against the other brand for be uh, for brand supremacy. That's what Survivor Series used to be all about, and that affects the Rumble and it means something. And it keeps you from just doing the, oh, I'm just going to do my rivalries. And it's just, like I said, it's just that over and over again. Instead, you're like, oh, man, I got to sacrifice these rivalries for, like, putting my four best superstars against their four best to try to win this for the Rumble. And lastly, my newest negative, please give me 12 months for the seasons, or at least the option. Like, I get playing shortened seasons, but like I said, that's why the Rumble needs to exist, money in the bank, all that. I just... Even the 10, uh, 10 month thing, the 50 weeks thing that they had before, I like that so much better than these shortened seasons. Because are you really playing 10 seasons if you're every 25 weeks you're at WrestleMania? Like, it just doesn't have the same vibe to it when you're not playing the whole calendar. Like, give me the actual calendar too. Let me see the calendar. It's important. But other than that stuff, it's pretty much everything you know from WW2K23's GM mode. You can play multiple shortened seasons. You can... You can do all the same stuff that you could, like get trophies and all that jazz from 2K23. You know the deal. So uh, now that we're towards the end of this, I played a couple years of this for the review. I'm going to play further after the review, but that's all I had time for in this one. Uh, did they address my issues? Uh, I would say kind of, I guess. All the new things they added were great for the replayability and the repetitiveness, which is good for me. That's a big plus, but I found extreme difficulty to be a very, very huge letdown for me. It really is no different than hard than the last couple years. I was just, I saw the word extreme and they got me really excited that it was going to be like impossible to beat them, but I beat them year one and year two already. I know there's more to it than that, but I just, I didn't see it again. There was just no like challenge that made me want to keep coming back and being like, oh, come on. I got to really, really pull it together here to get this victory. It's, I don't know. I just feel like it needs to be more difficult. It's okay to be difficult. And please get rid of the Mario Kart thing where they pull you back in if you're far behind and things like that. Like, if you get absolutely shit on, let me get dumped on by the computers and be behind by a million fans or something. Like, don't pull me back in or don't pull them back in. It works both ways. I'm talking more for even, like, user versus user as well. Just I know how that works from previous years from watching Up, Up, Down, Down and stuff. Like, they just have that rubber band Mario Kart effect. Just let the game do its thing. And if you are bad at the mode, be bad at the mode because it helps you improve so you can overcome those struggles. And it's just, a, I don't know, the difficulty thing just a letdown. And then on top of that, I addressed already the Money in the Bank Royal Rumble thing. It's not a thing. Another thing needs to be added. So overall, uh, I will say my opinion of GM mode is a lot better than the last two years. Like I said, it still needs a challenge aspect to it. And I feel like that's the only big thing it really needs. And give me, like, some brand interaction and things like that. And I will love this mode. I still like it, but I don't love it. And it's a shame because I really, really want to. All right, so we're probably, like, an hour and a half into this at this point. And let, let's talk about the gameplay. Because that's another thing that I've also been very critical of the last couple years. I'm glad it's not 2K20 bad. <laughs> But I am a massive fan of 2K19, and I feel like the gameplay there was just mwah, chef's kiss perfection as far as uh, like simulating real-life wrestling. I just feel like it clicked perfectly. It flowed well. But how does 2K24 fare? Well, where to begin when it comes to the gameplay in this game? I guess where I started the last couple years with the criticism, I'm openly not a fan of the new gameplay compared to 2K19, like I said. I can't stand the little things like having to grab in order to do moves and still not being able to run to Irish Whip. All that kind of stuff is just ridiculous to me. Like, why make it that way? And please, for the love of everything, bring back OMG spots. I, I Warning, I'm going to bring 2K19 up a lot in this part of it because I just feel like that game had awesome gameplay. It was amazing. And I still play 2K19 a lot to this day because it's fantastic. I know they have a few big spot things like backstage or wherever, but please just let me like even just break the damn barricade again like you could before 
it's a commonly used spot in real life, and it's an awesome spot to have in your gameplay as well. It just really gives that extreme vibe to it. Like I said, it's just commonly used, so why not have it in the game? Overall, I just feel like you can't have five-star classics anymore either with this newer gameplay like you could in 2K19. The matches are still too quick. They are better than 2K22 and 23. I will give it that. But they just need to be paced a little bit slower so you can have a little bit longer of a match. Like, I hate when you hit them with a move and they get right back up. Like I said, it's improved from 2K22 and 23, but it's still not on the level that it needs to be for me personally. Selling is a big part of wrestling. So I'm going to move into the positive side of things first. Well, not first, but now. Uh, first thing going into the gameplay I noticed for the additions of the new paybacks, which were cool. I like those. That is an important thing to have. Adds variety. I've said this in the other modes. Gameplay as well, it's also important. Variety is good in wrestling games. New paybacks equal different things. Also, you can have, speaking of variety, five finishers for a wrestler, which is great. I didn't think they would actually ever do that. I think that they didn't even go to three first. They just went right to five. I thought three was ideal first, and then they were just like, no, screw it, you can do five. So I was like, okay, that's awesome. So if I, because I always hated that if I have like, I don't know, John Cena, and you only get two of his AAs instead of like the Super AA, the other AA, this, and then if you want to add like a new finisher for your own taste, it's just, it needs to have more options. So that's awesome to see. The uh, the new punching mechanic mini game thing later on in like epic matches is my type of thing and I absolutely love it. I think it's a great addition. This is what I'm talking about when they add new creative things. I will definitely praise you for that and I love that. It's basic but it's awesome. And another thing I personally love as an ECW guy is the blood variation. The blood in this game can get crazy. I like how it changes all the time. It's like you could bleed a little bit, especially if you're in like a shorter match, you start bleeding, it matters. But if you have like this long epic match, you will bleed like a stuffed pig and it will look like you went through war and I adore it. So let's, this is half positive, half negative in a way. Uh, I'm going to go move on to things that were like brought back from previous games. Face paint damage as the match goes on is now back. And I just think that adds a very, very cool element to matches to see your face paint wear off. And it, like I said, it should have been in the game still. They took it away. They added it back. But I appreciate that it's back. Also, quote unquote, new weapons, but weapons that existed before, like the guitar, the trash can. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know if the microphone's new or not. I can't remember if that was in previous games. I want to say it was in a game or two, but I cannot remember specifically. But also, can you guys please just bring back grappling with the weapons though? Like 2K19? Like, let me DDT somebody on a chair, do a spinning jump kick on a chair, smash somebody's neck in the chair, do a concerto, which I can't believe is not in the game. This game doesn't have edge, but the last couple did, and you didn't let me do a concerto. And if you can do this stuff, I've never been able to figure out how to do it, so please tell me in the comments if that is a lie or not, but I believe that you can't do that stuff anymore. And also, still on the weapons thing, can you just let us use the ring bell in the championships that are on ringside? Like, how hard is that? And also, another thing they brought back that they relabeled for their uh, business side of things to make it sound new is super finishers also known as the OMG finishers that existed before 2K22. They they just renamed it to make it sound new. It's mostly just the same thing. You just hit like these epic double AAs and stuff from John Cena that were already in the game previously that you took out. And I know I sound super negative in this part, but I promise I'm not. Like I said, I just don't give you full credit. Like you came up with something new and exciting. Something I have been dying for though, that they had a long time ago in games, is the freedom for fighting on the announce table. You want to do a finisher on the table? Great, go for it. You want to do a dive off of it? Even better, go ahead, dive and go crazy, do whatever your creative mind wants to do. Or you want to just do a DDT on it, do some damage and not make the table break? Go for it. You choose. Your freedom, I love it. Don't take it away from me again. It's a great feature. And also, the camera facing the stage, another exciting thing that is back as well. Not my personal camera that I like, but I do love it to have for Royal Rumble matches. That's the only time I personally use it, 
but I know a lot of people love it. Good that you brought it back. Once again, it can't be that difficult to add it, so please let it be there. Options are always good. Don't take it away again as well. None of that stuff I just talked about take away again. Overall, though, for gameplay, I will say it's striding back to the direction that I want it to be. I'm hoping in the next year or two, I really don't feel like we're that far off from this game being up to par to 2K19 or even better. I feel like next year it could be up to par if they just add like barricade breaking back. Just give me like a couple more like spot things because to me wrestling is mostly about spots. I think that's a big thing and uh, I think that would be great and hopefully the year after that it's even better. Please don't take steps back. We're heading the right direction 2K. Just keep it going. Oh, I almost forgot that I, I actually had to go back and record this line that I'm about to say to you guys because I can't believe I forgot to mention it. But throwing weapons is the greatest thing they've come up, come up with in a long time. I can't even talk. I love it so much. Uh, it is hilarious, and I absolutely love it. I was pleasantly surprised to see this in the game. It is a fantastic feature. It is great for gameplay. It is awesome. It's just perfect for wrestling. Uh, let me start by just saying thank you to 2K for finally giving us more match types after years of me stressing over it, wanting new stuff, getting bored of the stuff that they currently have. We have Special Guest Referee, which is a load of fun, everyone's number one match type request for a long time. And then you also add in Ambulance Matches, and then you have Casket Matches. They're pretty similar, but different at the same time. Same idea behind them, but they're still fun to have options. And then my personal favorite, not Special Guest Referee, is the Gauntlet Match. Gauntlet match is just a really, really different thing to have in the game, and it's fun. I've been wanting it for years. They use it a lot to determine number one contenders in real life, and it makes me excited that it's in the game, finally. And uh, also mixed in with new uh, match types, you can also have more than two wrestlers backstage, which I also thought was cool. Uh, I only played one match of it just because I'm time-pressed on getting this review out, but I look forward to uh, seeing the creativity that people use for their custom universes and things like that for it i think that's a great thing to have in the game along with real referees being in the game as well another cool feature what the fuck and as we talk about real referees you can also create a ref which leads me over to the creation portion of this game and when it comes to wwe games as i've briefly touched on already any kind of creation or customization options are fantastic for wrestling games like having create a ref create a sign both of those being in the game now is amazing to see. Uh, other than that, though, I will say I'm a little bit disappointed the last few years, and especially this year, I thought they would upgrade, create an arena a little bit. Like, you should be able to have the LED things that they have on the barricade walls in real life, if you know what I'm talking about. Like, they exist in the real arenas. I'm surprised you don't. And I must say, personally... I'm really disappointed that I can't have those damn spider webs on the Halloween Havoc arena in any arena that I want. Give me my spider webs and let me create a nice Halloween arena. I love Halloween. Let me do it. Okay, so creation's pretty solid this year. A couple new additions. It's nice to see match types finally getting some upgrades as well. So graphically, though, how does the game look? Well, to be honest, it, it looks pretty incredible this year, if I'm being honest. And I don't even know really what's different about it. There's just something there that seems improved. I just found myself really being like, whoa, this looks really impressive this year. And I don't even play in 4K because of recording either. So I look forward to seeing that after I'm done recording as well. But uh, one thing I must say is I've been told the championships look just fine. And I must say personally, because I said I give you my honest opinion. This is my review video and I'm going to tell you how it is from my point of view. And once again this year, I do not think the titles look good. I don't think they look terrible, but I also do not think they look like the championships should look. Like seriously, championships don't look like this. I own plenty of them. I collect them. I actually love collecting them, so I know a good bit about how they look, and they don't look like they do in the game. And one last thing I must mention real fast because I'll never shut up about it. Every single year I review this game until it's back. Create a story. Not being in the game is a massive L. I don't care who you are. I feel like everyone wants this in the game. So please bring it back. Imagine how much fun it could be all year long downloading other people's stories and seeing what they come up with. The possibilities are just endless when it comes to create a story 
and I wish they would just give it to us and let us have some fun because it, it lets you play the game all year round. One final thing, and I promise it's the last thing. Real quick, I have to get off my chest before we move to the final rating here. Screw you, 2K, for community creations being down for almost a week for Xbox players. This is one of the only games that I cough up the money for the most expensive version of the game because I just love WWE and wrestling that much. And you reward us with not being able to download anything. As far as I know, I believe it was only Xbox having this problem, which is what I was playing on. And I couldn't set up my GM mode the way I wanted to or use any creative things to help my experience. And that's a big deal for me. And losing a point automatically for this game because of that. How do you like that, 2K? If, even if this game was perfection, 10 out of 10, you're getting a 9 out of 10 automatically the game. I'm bumping you down a point because I think it's absolutely unacceptable to have the game that way. So I, I let's just move on to the final verdict. So after all the suplexes, after all the punches, after all the frustration and excitement, what's my conclusion on this game? Well, for wrestling games specifically, I like to go back in after I've learned the game for a couple weeks. I know the controls a lot better. I know how the gameplay is. I know the proper settings to make the gameplay the way I want it to play. I love to play one match at the very end to see how it goes when I'm more experienced with the game. So this year I chose to play The Fiend vs CM Punk in an Extreme Rules ECW match. And for the first time since 2K19, I can genuinely admit that I enjoyed the hell out of this match, if I'm being completely honest. This game could get a lot more brutal than I thought, even without the OMG moments from 2K19 and the weapon, grapple, or weapon grapples and all that stuff. Look, I'm so excited thinking about this match. I can't even speak. Oh my god, that ending though, another chef's kiss for me. So what's my final verdict of this game? Well, when it comes down to it, I'm going to give WWE 2K24 a solid 8 out of 10. It could have been a 9, but I already claimed why it's not a 9. It loses a point automatically for that reason, but it is an 8 out of 10. The last couple years, I, I gave a 6, like 6.5. I don't do half points, but almost a 7 for 2K22. It was just missing some stuff. At launch is in the first month is when I really really dig into the game and rate it But it could have been a seven and 2k 23 was also a seven for me. This game is much improved It's it's eight out of ten and has potential being a nine But you didn't let me create stuff do community creation. So you get an eight But with that being said make sure you like the video subscribe to this channel if you want to see more reviews And I'm also going to be doing retrospectives in the future of older games when something new is not coming out so yeah, uh, I will see you guys around for the next one and have a great rest of your day. That's it for me. See ya.